Um, and, you know, there was a moment where Tay, I was playing defense against Tay, and he went to the hole, and I got elbowed in the face. Like, the first possession. Flagrant elbow. Um, so I was, you know, a welcome to NBA moment. What's up, Piston fans? It's your boy, Flagrant Elbow, back with another one. I want to thank everybody for your continued support. We are at 461 subscribers. Thank you all. Thank you all for the continued support. Uh, we got some content today based on Troy Weaver. Uh, Troy Weaver is really him. Troy Weaver is really him. So we're going to talk about Troy, the moves he just made, how remarkable that move was, some of the other moves Troy made, and what makes him so special as our GM. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, this upcoming season, a warning. I got a warning for everybody with the upcoming season, so we're going to share that too. But once again, want to thank everybody for 461 subscribers. Let's go ahead and get into the content. So when I look at the blueprint, in my opinion, the blueprint for the Detroit Pistons is to take the pieces that we have, the draft pieces, Cade Cunningham, uh, Sadiq Bay, Isaiah Stewart, Jaden Ivey, Take those draft pieces, particularly the Cade and Jaden, and see if floor spacing really is going to work. It always seems to work and make sense on paper. And let's see if we can get some more pieces to put that experiment in full speed with uh, Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham running the one and the two. Now, they, Troy was able to do that by adding a bona fide three-point shooter. We need more shooting, right? We got a bona fide three-point shooter. We just added Alec Burks, who's a 38% uh, three-point shooter, I believe, uh, career-wise. So he's a solid, very, very solid three-point shooter. And he gets to the basket and gets buckets too. But we just draft, uh, traded for uh, Boyan Bogdanovich, a 40% three-point shooter career-wise. This allows the experiment of floor spacing for the one of the two for... Cade and Jaden to go into warp speed. So now we get to see if spacing is really going to work with the draft pieces that we have. It also, this move that Troy was able to pull off checks some other boxes. It opens up a spot at center, releasing Kelly Olenek, opens up a center position for Jalen Duran to get in there, get some uh, minutes and the ball out while he's still learning. Uh, behind Beef Stew. Uh, he got Nerlene's Noel there to help him out as well. So he'll be able to learn um, and also learn on the fly by being able to get out there and play some minutes. Whereas if Kelly Olenek was still here, those minutes would probably be few and far between with Nerlene's and Bags and Beef Stew um, taking up some, some time at center position too. So that frees up a spot. Helps Jalen Duran to be able to get in there and get some good reps in. So now that may be based on what they've been seeing from him uh, coming up here lately. So it's a lot of things going on in that uh, situation, that scenario that I like. That's another box that's being checked off. Then it also allows the Pistons not to unnecessarily uh, rush Duran. I mean, not Duran, but not to unnecessarily rush Beef Stew as the stretch four. Beef Stew been taking some shots at um, some three-point shots more. Um, Summer League knocking those three-pointers down. But we don't have to necessarily rush Beef Stew to become a stretch for a new assignment for him. Pressure's off of his shoulders to be great at being a stretch for him. So now, what has Beef Stew been doing? He's been playing the five. Undersized, although he's undersized, he's still more comfortable, of course, playing the five. And you can run Bojan, Boyan, I'm sorry, at the four, Bogdanovich. Let him play the four in a small ball lineup, and you can have some success. You still can have some success because even though they may be undersized, teams are going to have to keep up with them as well. And we know Beef Stew runs from basket to basket well, with the quickest in the league. So that's one uh, box that gets checked off. Beef Stew doesn't have to be a um, doesn't have to be great at being that stretch four. Also, you look at uh, Sadiq Bay at the three and Broyan at the four if they do the small ball lineup. Sadiq and dropped the Bob 50 piece Donovan last had season. a couple 50 piece games in his career. And once again, shooting at 40% from the three. So now you got K and Ivy slashing and cutting 
and they got somebody to kick it out to, they can shoot the three. Some solid three-point shooters. So that's another box that gets checked off. And then if the experiment doesn't work, then Bogdanovich uh, comes off the books next year. And if anything, he could easily be moved by trade deadline. And I'm sure a contending team would like to have Bogdanovich uh, to sign him. So that uh, can happen if he doesn't work out with the Pistons or uh, if, if Troy just decides to move him anyway, then you can move him and get some, um, some draft pieces for him. So it's a win-win situation. And for Troy to pull this off shows that Troy is a mastermind. He is really him. He's a mastermind in understanding the blueprint uh, needed to achieve the results he wants. And he also understands the blueprints of other organizations based on where they are. In their, uh, if they're rebuilding, retooling, or if they're contending or, or looking to get deep into the playoffs. He understands what teams are looking for, and he understands what our organization is looking for, and he's able to take those chess pieces and make them work together to get the results that best work out, that work out best for the Detroit Pistons. And it seems like in the past, it's always uh, Detroit hasn't been able to pull off trades like this. Um, even with Burks and the rim protector like Noel, Detroit has never, it seems like, been able to consistently pull off solid trades where you got solid, solid players coming in uh, to the organization to help fill spots. You would always grab some third-tier player uh, uh, to come fill spots that we needed. So Troy has been able to do this time and time again, finessing teams grabbing pieces that are, no, that are not only help the team, but that are contract friendly and easy trade bait for the future. So you think with close to uh, 70 million in cap space next off season, off season, if he can turn the vet that we've acquired into some first round picks for next year's draft, that's going to be amazing. It's a win, win, win. So like I said before, whether we make the playoffs, play in, or we just have a good season this year, uh, I'll be satisfied with that. And I do have a warning, though. And here's the warning. Let's not allow our optimism, the finesse moves of Troy, or the A-plus draft moves to cause us to focus more on winning now than to allow the restore to come to fruition. We got to be patient. The prediction for the Pistons was that they win anywhere from between 27.5. I think Vegas had us there. Uh, Bleacher Report had us winning 29 games. So somewhere in between that is where the Detroit Pistons are predicted to win. Will we be satisfied with that? Or will we be looking for 40 wins or more or closer to 40 wins? Um, if we do that, we could easily be disappointed. We got to remember that this team is still young. They got some good veterans, some solid veterans. But uh, in order for the restore to completely materialize, they, there's going to have to be a lot of development and a lot of chemistry being built with this young core. It may take a couple more seasons. So let's just for now enjoy the ride. Get ready for some exciting, solid basketball and watch it all develop right before our eyes. We got to be patient with this young core and enjoy watching them develop their chemistry, camaraderie, and their brother brotherhood on the path to respectability in the East and contention in the East on the journey for our next couple or more championships. So that's the goal. We want to see the Detroit Pistons um, be respectable in the league for years. Years. Coming out the East for years. That's the goal right there. So that's all I had today. Just wanted to highlight those things about Troy and also the team and where we're headed. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. How do you feel about what's going on with the team, the moves Troy has made, and where do you see them as far as their, where they stand next season with their wins or loss? Leave it all in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. With that being said, thank you all for listening to your boy, Flagrant Elbow. Stay safe.